So, everything up and running. Good day, everybody. Welcome back to another Behind the Dice. It, behind the Dice. Behind the Dice. I stumble over that. Behind the Dice episode. Uh, we're going to chat some D&D &D today. Work on a couple mappity type projects. And I had to get back to the regular map now. I've made so many boo boos today. There we are. Uh, hello, Panda. Good day. Yeah, I'm going to work on trying to build a city map, which is not something I've done in this program before, so I'm a little interested. Like, there's a house, there's a house, there's a house. They're different houses. I'm not going to use those, but example. I'm going to try to build a city. I'm not sure how big of a city. Question. Hey, congrats, MT. Two years, my friend. Well played. Two years. You've been with us a while. Glad to have you. Oh, this favorite. So yeah, we're going to work at making a city today. I made it all green. It started all as water. Not an underwater city. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to open up the catalog and see what we've got to look with. So these are uh, destroyed gatehouses, destroyed merchant skills, ruins. Special buildings, cathedrals, churches, things of that nature. Windmills. Right. Makes sense. I guess the real question I'm having. What do you do for roads? Path. Dirt hills. Natural. Like natural state. Road. Fields. Oh, that's pretty cool. We got different field options. So yeah, we're gonna chat about D and D. Thought it might be thin walls. That looks good. Ox. Wall sections. Arch. Hmm. Not seeing a ton of things in the way of roads. I guess everything in between is considered. Winter, oh, that's good. Elves, Gothic horror. What makes this other than the little gargoyle? What makes? Well, let's see what we've got in here. Clipping mask. Figure out some of these things. So, what I'd like to do today is build a map, city in merged worlds. Seraph and Deacon are current. I thought anyway. What else we've got? Path. Don't need that. Textures. Ah, here we go. This might be what I'm. Excellent. Okay. Small debris. Excellent. Small debris alpha. Okay. Fields. Desert stone. Okay. Yeah. Here's here's what we're looking for. Use something along. Frozen Street. I like that. Cutting out quite a bit. Hey, look. Hmm. Cam's working. I apologize. I'll try to talk a bit louder. Maybe uh, I'm just fading off in my speaking, which is also very popular. There's a snow patch street. Here we go. Dark Stone Brick. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what we're looking for. That they won't you put it on here. Why won't you let me put it on here? Okay, we're going to have to start a different one. I think I may have messed up here. I think I may have done boo-boos. Not let me put the road on here. All right, then. Screw you, then. We'll do another one. I close out of this. Turn to your maps. I will lose them. Okay, try that again. Equip maps. Uh, let's see. So watercolored cities is the one that I chose last time. That's what I was going to try to do it based on. That looks like a city, right? That's kind of what I'm looking for. That style. Landscape. That's that one. Loading maps. Here's what it looked like last time.
see. Whatever that green thing is goes on top of everything. Where's that green stuff? Go? Yeah, yeah, that looks more like it. I can put buildings and such on there. That 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 looks more like it. I guess I need to determine the walls and the shape of this kingdom. Interesting. So this kingdom uh, is meant to be something that they're going to spend some time in. Not meant to be just a a quick run through. This this uh, this kingdom will be dealing with some stuff for a bit. Um, I want the characters to get involved in multiple different situations that are based in or near this city. Careful not to give anything away. What is it? Stone domes. Where's the road? Oh, I remember. I'm in the wrong spot. Roads were over here. So yeah, we're going to do a couple different things here. Um, I like that. I think that was good. Dark street. Rick dark stone alpha. Well, let me go over top of it. Okay, so you can't go over top of one you've already done. So, my thoughts are that while I'm talking about this, we're going to talk about stories in general. Because uh, I talk about adventure and character creation and what you need to get the world going, but I haven't spent a lot of time talking about actually putting your story together. Um... And that's probably one of the most important facets. Other than having the information you need about your world or the city or whatever it is you're working in, it is imperative that you have a good story. The problem with the story is that you can get too attached to it. If that's the case. Then you, you don't want people making changes to your story. And that's... Not going to happen in D&D. &D. People are going to make changes. They're going to do things differently than you think they're going to do, at least on occasion. So when that happens, you have to be prepared to alter your story um, and adjust your story for the needs of your play. A lot of times, D&D &D groups can be very, very different in the way they like to play games. Some groups are battle-heavy. They like the combat and the fighting and such. Some people care more about a story and they could care less if they ever draw a weapon. Usually it's somewhere in between, of course. You've got people who really love puzzles. and Some people hate puzzles. So designing your story and the world that you're putting them in needs to make sure it provides them the type of content they're going to enjoy that's going to make them want to come back. Also good to be able to put them in stuff that they don't normally do. Doesn't mean you have to put them in stuff they hate, but put them in situations to try something new may introduce them to a new thing that they would love to see in your story even more. And the game and the story run hand in hand, but they are different. Uh, the game gives you the tools you need to live within the story. The story is your shell. This is the, the framework that everything else comes from. Right? You've, got, you've already created your world at this point. If you've got gods, you've created your gods. You know what classes exist. You know what races exist. You've built your world from an overall scope. Now you need to take that and narrow it down to affect just a small group of people. Right? Where does this group of people fit in all of this information that you've put together? Um, world. So that's where we have to begin our story. The story should have an ending. Doesn't mean that's the end of the story, the, you know, the, the campaign for the characters. You can always then continue those characters and add more to the story. But you should know where it's going to start and where it's going to end. No matter what they decide to do in the adventure, the end of it, they should end up approximately where you want them to. Maybe in different ways. Maybe the way that they play will have an effect on how you want your story to end. They may have opened up an avenue you never thought of and you want to change what you're doing to make it match. Nothing wrong with that at all. hundred times merged worlds has changed because of something people have done in the story that I thought worked out great. Uh, a good example of that uh, would be, I used this chatting on a stream just the other day, uh, the character of Molly, the pie lady, who ended up becoming 
relatively consistent and interesting NPC that popped in a lot. It was originally intended just to be the person that when the heroes returned to the city, they'd catch up on what news they missed. Um, but then Darsh became addicted to pies. That was something that Darsh did. He wants all the pies. And that opened up a whole door for me to make Molly more of a friend to help, you know, be involved. And then she became part of the story. End up marrying Lucas down the road. There's a lot of different stuff that came off of a minor NPC that was maybe going to have one or two interactions. It changed my story and where I took her, which opened up the door to future stuff like her and Lucas. So uh, don't trap yourself into a single story. Don't trap yourself into a, I have to do what I thought of originally. Man, adapt. A lot of things you can do by adapting. Where did I put walls at? I gotta figure out how to build the edge around. I don't want this flying in the sky, but I'm not, it's awfully large. Uh, share something. One of my friends, a 3D printer, her ideas of the fishing boxes for dices. Says she can try to do one, so profit for her. Lots of customers. There you go. Cool. Of the fishing boxes for dices? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I definitely... It's what I like to use for my dice. It works out very, very well. It took me a moment to realize what we were talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can get one, design it up, dress it up, or build something like that, definitely. Another good thing that you can use for dice, um, and I, I never mentioned this during that conversation, uh, sewing kits also usually have sections uh, in there. There'll be a different sections... Uh, segments that you could put different dice in. You can get big ones like a toolbox or a tackle box that open up sometimes and you'll have multiple shelves to the side. My grandma had one like that. It was wooden. She had it since I was like, before I was born and that would have been perfect for dice. It does look like rocks. I'm building a city. So this is going to be a city map and I'm trying to figure out how to be more detailed with it. There's walls and things, but I got to figure out how these walls work, right? I feel like walls are relatively important. I feel like houses, castles, and bridges, these things are going to fit pretty well in with what I'm doing. What's this? Modular bridge. I don't even know what that is. Massive walls. Oh, okay. There we go. Rough walls. Thin walls. How thin is a thin wall? Oh, my goodness. That's thin. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lanta. That's going to be a process. Works. Works. Uh, tons of free sewing pants for dice bags. That's true. Dice bags are often the most popular and consistent thing that people use are dice bags. And for most people, a dice bag is going to more than meet your needs. It depends on how much of a dice goblin you become. That is very common to... I'm in the term for people who just want all the dice. So I didn't want the city to be straight up square. I'm wondering if I can... Can. Ooh. All right. All right. Go. Do this. The turny thing. Yes. Excellent. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I look. As long as I can do that, as long as I can make it go on the angles and such that I want, I am good. So my, my thought here is do I build this, like this is a map of a specific borough, or do I make this the whole city? And just looking at the size of things, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Uh, how's the Karens? Oh, right about the normal. Luckily, I've been off the last couple days, so I haven't had to deal with them. <laughs> Love watching your D&D podcast. Oh, excellent, Logan. I appreciate that. Thank you. Glad you are enjoying it. I enjoy sharing it. And telling it. Ooh, look here. House. Small blue houses. Medium blue clusters. Farm houses. You like... Red noble blocks. I kind of feel like these fit things better. Oh, my goodness. Are they different? <gasps> they are. Look at that business. Oh, this is perfect for a hodgepodge city, which is exactly what I wanted. 
That's excellent. Well, my goodness, this is going to work out better than I thought. It's going. Okay, okay. So this is going to be a borough then. This is not going to be just one of the uh, one of the cities. I'm going to have to make it borough esque. Then I can put the walls on later. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Look at that. Look how well that lines up. I'm very happy with this. Okay, I was worried about building a city. I normally do them by hand. I don't normally build things of this nature, you know, just by myself. Okay. Build a little courtyard there. That's too big for that. Uh, Merge Worlds is definitely a giant part of my life, and it is overwhelmingly fulfilling to have people enjoying it as much as I do. Even though it is a smaller audience, for sure, uh, that in no way tracks from the experience of getting to be able to share it with people. And of course, I'm always looking for new folks to share it with, of course, but... Uh, even if there was never anybody else, I love sharing it with the people that I have. So thank you all for listening to it, giving me that option. to these. Oh, you know what? Right there. Okay, I like that. So now I'm going to back out for a minute here. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to look for something that looks, maybe look a little bit more businessy. Um, there's, there's the blue ones. I thought about maybe using some different colors areas. These ones look like those ones, except it's a different color. Got here. And I got bigger houses too, right? Like I've got bigger ad adventures guilds, the fighters guild, things of that nature. Here's another big thieves guild. War for abandoned city. Well, yeah, it's definitely going to look abandoned until I get it built up. <laughs> going to hopefully fix some of that. Don't need desert. Don't need winter. Don't need elves. Gothic horror. Right? Maybe find a building or two in there. Ghost town. Like those actually look really good if they weren't so glowy. Where was I? I was up here. All right, so there's some different options here. There's not enough colors to do a completely different color in every other section, but there are some different things here. Right? Yeah, look at that business. like it when things turn out real well. These are all much smaller, single line. Mostly, there was a square one. I'd kind of like to have another square one. See, I thought about every every area having its, like, homes and then having its shops and stuff. These are just a little bit smaller than I'm looking for. Still haven't found. Medium red block. I think that each town should have its little market square. Each one's going to be walled off. I felt one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to give every borough something specific that they're known for. So, as I introduced at the end of the last city, one section that does fights, battles and such, Almost like a street fight meets gladiator kind of thing. And that's what they're known for. So having a very small arena looking place that doesn't have the luster of an arena would be what they're known for. None of them are on the water. The city's not on the water. We've discussed that. Fish are something that you don't find a lot in meals and only the wealthy can afford them. But regular food is more than available. Nobody goes hungry. I mean, majority, there's always somebody homeless. Overall, there's, you know, there's plenty of food available. No one's going hungry because of lack of food. So there's just not a lot of water. I mean, that have fish. There may be some small rivers and lakes around there. You can get a little bit, but even then they wouldn't have anything large, not enough to feed a city. So nobody's going to have a water section. So again, it's kind of the thoughts of figuring out which section they're going. See, a map like this would be good because it's, I've not had maps of this nature 
that I've been able to share during streams of actual merged world. So having a map like this um, will help the listeners, in my case, or the players, in your case, of planning out their routes and what they want to do. So let's take that back to story, what I was talking about earlier. Right? Let's say that you are DM, right? You're writing a story. No, no, no. We won't write size. So you're writing a story, right? And that's important. Um, of course it is. Your story is everything. Having something like this will enable you to write your story to an area, right? So hypothetically, um, I am choose which one of these buildings is the secret entrance to the Thieves' Guild, right? My players are staying at an inn way down here. Oh, well, I need to, you know, they're going to pass through this direction. Or what if the players are like, well, what's in this section? I could put, well, this is a store. These are all houses, but this is a blacksmith shop. This is a leather worker. And they want to visit people. Having access to that map will enable them to be able to travel in the city in a memorable way. To them, it becomes more of a real place because they can see where they're going. They can plot a route. If they're going to split up, they can like, you guys do this section, we'll do this section. That helps out. For rich or for poor, that's a good question. I haven't decided yet. I'm, I'm not even sure which color this one's going to be yet. Because remember, all seven of my boroughs have different colors. Um, and while the Colors are the banners and the sash. The buildings aren't all green or anything like that. So the different colored buildings will work. And I think that most boroughs will have some wealthier areas and poor areas. I'd like to have that. Although one area that's known as the slums, which is maybe the poorest section, while at the same time, uh, because it's one of the largest, right? You'd think that uh, one of the largest poorest area. It's also the the group that the other guilds don't want to mess with the most because they don't know what's going on in there. You know what I mean? I would like, the, it's, it's the poor one, but it's also the mysterious one. The street gangs in there are a little less forgiving of people on their turf, right? Because they assume you're, if you're here, it's to cause trouble because why would you go to the poor area? You're not going to shop, you know what I mean? They wouldn't have a very good marketplace or anything of that nature. So, you know, things like that story point of view an idea and one might be much more wealthy because of merchants and stuff um they may be wealthy but they don't have a lot of shops they have a few shops which tailor to high-end stuff but these are the people that provide the in uh, import and export of goods so they have a lot of money but they may not have as much to shop in their area because the stuff they provide are to the the common man if you will so things about that nature. So again, just kind of figuring out what each borough is for and going to do. This one I'm building today is going to be basically a generic a test borough, uh, which I'm still going to use. But I would like to be able to test kind of where I want to make these things go. And as I'm doing this, I also have to, of course, assume that the other borough's edges have to kind of line up to this some way. That's going to be a challenge of its own. I want the wall is definitely, I don't at any time want it to look like they're in a square. And there may be a small pond at some point that, you know, affects a, a wall. This is, and this is the other thing I'm thinking is that the burrows themselves are not walled off from each other. Or are they, right? And that's something that I'm needing to figure out as well. Do I want them to be walled off from each other, or do I just want the wall around the outer edge of the city? Um, that's, that's, that's a harder part. Should the burrows be easy to get in and out of? Is there a reason the burrows are walled off from each other? From a story point of view, you know, they weren't intended to be separate burrows. That's just something that happened over time. Did they start walling themselves off? Hello, Miss Ashley. And hello, Michael. I'll let you uh, chat. It says subscribers only, yet it also says I'm a subscriber. Yeah, it's subscribers only. All my streams are now. It cuts down on the spammers. Not all of them, but it cuts it back on them. 
This actually, I'm making my first city map in this. So this could be the edge of the city, hypothetically. And this be a, one of the burrows in it. Or I could have them all. To buildings acting as walls is a lot of what I was thinking too. One of the downsides is, is it doesn't, oh, not that. It doesn't let me, um, it doesn't let me turn these that I can see. I'm, I'm going to try. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Make it bigger, smaller. Yes. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, excellent. That is excellent. Okay, this is going to seem weird, but bear with me. That changes a lot of what I was going to do then. Can't go back any further because if I do, it's. I have to delete these. Delete. Delete. This is going to change a lot of how I, I laid this out now. So that's awesome. Great idea. Great idea using the buildings to create natural barricades. And, you know, you could even imply that over time they were built that way on purpose, right? So, um, oh, what we got here? Uh, building, yes. Yeah, I'm starting the map for the city that Seraph and them are in currently. Um, and what I'm doing here right now shouldn't give away anything story. But one thing I did say at the very beginning is the city they're in right now is intended to be, unlike so far in the story, this is a place they're going to spend some time. Uh, they are definitely not leaving the city anytime soon. Uh, they're going to be involved in multiple different issues, different groups dealing with the factions. Um, and a lot of that stuff is going to lead them to where they go in the future. Um, this is a point where alliances and enemies can both be made. Um, for more of a long term. So again, I, for those of you who come back to the story, one of the things we were talking about today, um, we go back to the concept I was talking about earlier about uh, seeding your story, putting things in the story that don't seem to matter now, but are overwhelmingly more important later. Uh, as in the city didn't start with walls. Who's the first group to wall themselves off? Well, that's a good question. Now, if you'll remember, I said that the original city had walls around it, right? And then the city grew beyond the walls. So now the main city is outside of what is that inner city where the family and some of the most wealthiest people live. So that wall is still going to exist at the center. Center-ish. doesn't have to be perfectly centered. Um, but then the burrows grew up around it. And you'd think that at some point they would put up some type of wall around an outer edge from defense. Even though they didn't have a lot of natural enemies, you still want to be prepared, right? So something like that. Uh, then could have secret passages inside the buildings for very much so. I mean, when we talked about this most recent episode, for those of you who heard it, there was a building that they got to that you couldn't get to without going through another building. That's the exact kind of concept I was thinking of, that buildings were built to be more secure. So, oops. I can move things, luckily. So we can start building a bit more of a natural barrier. But that also means I can do more with the stones. And by that, I don't mean any type of musical band. Get back to stones. For all intents and purposes, I can do the whole map. And then what I don't need, I can clean off again later. Because I do want there to be an outskirts. But some of the boroughs may be mostly internal. You know what I mean? They don't have a lot of exit to the city. This is a city that's big enough that the people, many people could live here their whole lives without ever leaving. At least of the, the poorer caste, for sure. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, this city is going to definitely be with us for a while. And then once I have this design, I can put it up where people can look at it if they want it. Online. Well, at the same time, keep a copy for myself where I can put specific marks on it for points of interest for me. At uh, some point, they erected a new wall within the city with the purpose of dividing off. That would be pretty serious. Yeah, and I agree. If they started building a wall inside the city to break off the burrows, I agree. I think that that would have caused way more anarchy. But if they slowly built up buildings over time 
and put construction where a, an old street was kind of thing or built across the street to connect two buildings. Building natural fortifications. You could still break through a window and maybe get through, but you couldn't just easily march a large group of people. With a couple of exceptions. There should be at least one or two main streets that cut through any of the boroughs. Even the poorest one. There should be a, there should be a place to... You know, primary roads that would still come into the boroughs. And it may be, like, for example, this map here, it could come up here and go this way, right? With a bunch of little roads branching off it, but a main highway or a main street that would have more of your shops and your inns and things of that nature on it that lead and connect the city as a whole. Because even though the boroughs are managed by the borough, the people in charge of the city, they see it as an entity, right? We need to be able to get goods from one side to the other and things. Good place for starting a new adventure? But I'm hoping. I'm hoping. All right. So we've got that cleared out now. So now I want to look a little bit more about what I can do for building. I have ideas. I like this, being able to just grab and move things. It's not something I've done much with the city ones, or the, the world size ones. Um, but I could see it working well for based on what I'm about to try to do. Where was another thin one? Let's see. Just in theory, if I... There we go. Um, the main roads would also separate them. Could be. It could be at times, yeah, people living on the opposite sides of the street. That's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea either. If you're on the wrong side of the tracks, that's a good example. See, I like this. Like, this here could be very easily blocking this off somewhat. You know what I mean? Like, oops. Yeah, I moved that here. So there's going to be some streets that still go in and out. Do this, so. Kind of like that. Okay. Good deal. So here's what I need to do then. Instead of building around the outer edges, I think that from a story point of view, if we're going to go with the main road concept, the main road needs to be what I build first. Right? That's going to be the public buildings, the, peop the buildings people are more likely to see. Once I have that, I can then start to hodgepodge off of that main road. The main road then in any borough needs to be its primary position for connecting the boroughs themselves. You can have cul-de-sacs and other things. And there could be small walls in some sections. And there might even be a wall around the entire outer city built by the city viewers overall. I'm okay with that. It, there's nothing wrong with having a wall to defend your city, but I don't think breaking the boroughs off with a with an actual fortified wall would make as much sense. So I agree with you guys on that. So let's see what we have to do to build a road. So I'm slightly confused on how to use some of this. So let's see what I'm talking about. So if I wanted to put, what is that? Paper tileable. I don't even know what that is. What's this? Water light alpha? Ooh, water light alpha. Farmland, but there won't be much of that in the city. What's this? City tiles. I don't think so. What's the debris again? Yeah, I almost feel like I wanted some areas like a park, right? Maybe one of the boroughs could be known for having a very nature area, very alchemist-based. Hippies! Oh, I have a hippie section of the city. That would be awesome. I need a hippie section. Everybody needs a hippie. Hippie sections just make sense to everyone. So the road needs to be different color. And if that's what I used... Uh, is the intention to have different functions? No. Um, all of them are going to have... I guess I should take that back. Each of them is going to have a mix of everything, 
but that doesn't mean there might not be a specialization or something specific. Like we talked about earlier, there could be one borough that's mostly people who handle import and export. So it's majority of noble folks. So they have a few stores and a really nice inns, but it's more of a residential up-class area. Um, whereas there could be one area that's a market area where there's a lot of shops, so it's known for that. Or there could be an artisan museum section. The, like That could be in a borough, right? Museum artisans, market. These can exist within a borough, but then there's still houses and business of regular people in there, right? Um, that kind of thing. Flower power. There you go. All right, so I'm going to test something. Well, first of all, I can't do anything. I need a layer. How do I do the layer thing? That doesn't work. Setting. Saw oh, this once and I can't remember. Grid blocks. Oh my gosh. I could have done it with squares? I didn't know that. Circle's what I was using. Huh. That would have been cool. I need to figure out how to remove things. Oh, what's this? Oh, I didn't do it. Grid tool. Half option. X I don't need. Everything would be imported. Uh, and that's one of the things we talked about in the story as well. Uh, this last episode is that the city very quickly didn't have anything they needed. So that's why they reached out to all the little towns and said, hey, we'll protect you and buy your goods. We'll be your biggest customers because they needed those foods and farm and things. for them. And that's what kind of created that symbiotic relationship where it's like, we're a big city. We have a bigger militia. Could we come and take you all over? Maybe. But if we get a good deal and provide you good money, you'll work harder and all, we'll be, all your goods will come to us. We don't have to worry about you sending stuff off. We'll be your best customer. And it's worked out really well. We'll stay to your politics. You stay out of messing with our politics and our boroughs. The borough stuff doesn't go outside of the city much at all. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to add... Ooh, just straight up colors. Oh, look at that. You can put a grid right on there. I didn't... That's... Um, damn it. Up here? And color it, right? Hmm. I've not had to do this before. Usually anything I wanted to draw on top of it worked. Flower gardens, parks, or just some natural, you know, field type kind of thing. I think that you'd see some of that more in, again, the wealthier area. Would make sense to me. There is a way. There it is. Layers. Ah. Uh, ah! That's how I do it. Okay, cool. Now I know. Let's go to the darker stone. And I need this to be smaller. Because I want to be able to build the road my style. Go even smaller. Feel too big. One square at a time. Works for me. Not. Okay, I've lost it somehow. Hmm. Green girl loves a blue boy. <laughs> West Side Story Romeo romance? Uh, possible? I hadn't really thought of that, but... Uh... Guess it's possible. Only because it's such a popular trope. I... Hey, it worked a second ago, dang it. Ah! Objects. Background. Hmm. Let's see. New loss. Yeah, I, it's true. One hidden. Why is one hidden? I don't want to hide any. Oh. How does one? Does one? 
What if I uncolor that? Uncolor that. Won't let me uncolor it. Unblock it. Hey, that works. Black one does not. And then I lost it. I guess we could use a white one. Oops. All right, it's going to be wider than one. Somehow did some of this. Think at your eyes, because I have the same issue. <laughs> like a main road here. And the main road would probably be relatively square-like. With another one crossing through the main city. Because uh, I don't want... I didn't want all of the boroughs to be just a straight square, right? So this borough could come partially across the street and some of the other borough could be in there as well. Smaller, smaller stuff, right? So, let's just say... That's wide enough for a main road, I would say, for that. The, the size buildings that I'm seeing, anyway. I feel like that would work okay. I'm going to have to figure out this background foreground thing. But, let's see. So, oops. That's not up. I want to not see things. So, let's go over here. I'm done with colors. Let's go back to buildings. <laughs> so I need an, I need some important straight up buildings, right? So I'm going this small. This is an awfully big building. Medium noble building, big noble building. I'm thinking, how small is that? Well, that is a straight up small building. Okay. And how big is a big noble building? Oh wow, that's just it's still small. I just I thought it was going to be bigger. That actually works out better for me to be. Um. Because I'm looking for something that could be like an inn. Red fortified building. Yeah, special buildings. What do we got here? Alchemist. Brewery. Oh, brewery. That would be fishery. Herbalist. Look at these hippies. <laughs> inns. Ah, here we go. In one. In oh, these are all there's three inns here. So when it says three. Show me the three different ends it'll bounce between. Artisans Guild. I'm not going to use them for what they're for. I'll use them for what I want, but it's interesting to see what they've got going on here. Big Thieves Guild. Big Merchants. Big Mages? I don't know why I'd call them. Mages should have a tower, right? This one looks fantasy to me. That, that looks like it could be what it's supposed to be. University? Ooh, Cathedrals. That's Temples. Staking up here with these color bills. Okay. So for inns, I do like the concept of the inn. They imagine, let's say hypothetically, that there's a big inn there. Biggest inn. It is, in fact, the biggest inn. Okay. Yeah, I need the end to be a little bigger than that. Not you. Okay, that looks like a decent size, a bigger building. I need the end to definitely stand out from the. And these have to be much larger. So, any of these colors. I'm not going to use them quite the same. Grab one of these. Again, assuming these are some of the larger buildings behind along the road. Oops. This is definitely slower than doing it myself on, say, my uh, on paper. But I think in the long run, just having the medium that'll make it easier to share with people will be worth it.
Oh well, mistakes were made. Let's go back in and grab one of the other ones, which I haven't used yet. This one, we'll use a blue one. And again, these don't all have to be ins, right? It could just be big buildings. And I just want to put some of the specialty buildings along the road. Theater. How big is that? The fancy building. Thought is, if I put some of the bigger buildings and then build the city around them, it makes a little more sense. I really... Gardens. Four different colors of that. That's not... Big Fighters Guild. That gives me an idea. That gives me... We talked about the fights in one of the one of the districts. I'm trying to decide, do I want the fights on the main road, or would it be cooler if they were like off the main road and you had to get to the fights? I'm leaning that way. Back over here. Let's start getting some buildings in. Here's where I'm going to leave road open. This, I'm not going to make this white for road, but it's assumed you can go through the clear areas, is my thought. Again, this is the first time I've ever made an, a map of this nature on a computer, so I'm still kind of figuring it out. That one I can use. I would think that there'd be a lot of stuff built along the edge of the city. In my head, it's it's so hard. <laughs> this is going to sound stupid to merge ideas together, uh, <laughs> merge world. Um, because in my head, you know, when I when I'm thinking about medieval, right, which is ninety percent what D and D is based on, fantasy medieval type kind of concept. You look at most of the cities and even the cities and games, and there are very rarely straight roads um, in medium to smaller cities. Larger cities is a little bit different. It'd still be hodgepodge in going through them. But in, in a lot of you see, like in my head, I'm picturing things like, uh, uh, let's give a good example, um, Skyrim. The roads curvy and through the city, and there's stuff built along each of the sides, and there's other small alleys you can go through to get to other things. So I'm not, I'm not, that's 90% of what I'm picturing. But in the back of my head, I also have this Western concept of like an town in the Old West where everything's built along the main street, and there's not much behind it. And a lot, I, I when I first started doing this, a lot of my small towns looked more of the Western design than they did medieval. And I still have to brace myself sometimes to make sure I'm not making that mistake again because I don't need to. But relatively. You've made a lot of consider saving your work. Okay. Probably should do that, shouldn't I? All right. I need you guys to pick a burrow. Pick a color. Which one is this burrow going to be? So the colors, again, if I recall, were red, blue, green, yellow, white, black, and orange. If I remember correctly. Green is where they started out, right? Green is a burrow that's going to be... Instead of crossing over the road, it's going to be a very long section of the road and cross maybe a little smidge because it's going to be where you come in through the city. Into the city. Through the city. Hot time, time to the city. Green. All right. So this is green, huh? 
Oh, oh, we got a green and a yellow. Intriguing. I'm going to start changing the colors of some of these because it's not all going to be that same color. Where like they're all yellow, obviously. I'm gonna see I'm gonna try to hodgepodge it more with the mixed colors. No purple this time. It's familiar to Oramon. No, that's true. I, I don't remember how if I mentioned purple. I don't think I had purple. Black and purple is definitely Oramon's colors. Is this place in league with Oramon? Who knows? Lex got green in first, so I think we're going to do green. So if I'm building that, then it means I need to get rid of this because the fight is not in that area. Green is the area that they're in. So this is going to be in. So what I'm going to do here, I have an idea. Probably think Draven, super genius like you, has ideas. It's true. Now open up again, Dan. This again. So what I'm thinking here is I'm going to put a wall here. And this is the outer wall of the city where they had to come through the gates here. And then this is inside the city. If that makes sense, what I'm saying there. Show you what I mean. So let's say hypothetically we go back to our walls from earlier. This is where, oh, that's just way too small for a wall. I would need a bigger wall than that. Is there a bigger wall? Stairs. Modular stairs. Thin walls. Massive walls. How big is massive? That is not massive. Throw you out, man. I'm not trying. Need a bigger wall. No, I'm not trying to spin you, man. Why increase your size? Upper layer, down a layer. Not letting me make you larger. Okay, then. Do you and try the other one. That one larger. And fine, I'm just going to make it this way. Being a turd. That's what she said. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. All right, so that looks more Wally to me. By Wally, I don't mean the robot. If I was to build a wall here, because I mean, you think about this, right? Like, if that's a house, that's a pretty thick wall. That's half the width of a house. That seems about right to me. And the city again itself is not going to be completely square, tended to. But that's a good place to start. Here and pick a wall. Bear with me. A method to my madness here. I'm going to delete that other one. I'm just setting it there so I can. it's easier for me to make it look like it's joined up. I get weak when you're around me. I'm putting some more thoughts into the... Uh, Put an extra one there by accident, that's fine. I'm putting more thoughts into writing the uh, song that Kip sang to the, uh, what were they, the um, Viking dudes. You're not going to work with me, are you? Went off the city. Still, it goes off the city. Okay, well, obviously I can't do that then. No, no, that still works. Cool. That. That. I don't have a way of grabbing a hand and pulling it in here, which is irritation. Oops. I already have what I want. Oh. Write a Merge World... Yeah, Jim and I have talked about writing a Merge World soundtrack for a while. Where I wrote the lyrics 
he played the music, and then we find somebody talented to sing the songs. Maybe even different people to sing the song. I strug my, my struggle with that is the music that I imagine with Merged Worlds is very likely not the music listeners think of when they think. But he has their... It's one good thing about having your own soundtrack like that. You create the soundtrack in your mind that goes... There is definitely specific styles of music that play along with Merged Worlds and same kind of music that inspired me to write it. I think that sharing that music with people would be cool. Just whether or not people will. Some people may not like that kind of music, right? There we go. It's obviously not straight. Look how it's going on an angle there, but I'm okay with that. Not intended to be perfectly straight. And I would say that the burrows probably overflow and mix a little bit in the middle. I'm going to be showing the main part of the burrow. There's assumption that there's going to be bits of city between them that just aren't important to the story if that makes sense. So it's not meant like you could put all these together as one big puzzle. Uh, you probably could with the inner part, but it'd be close to it. The official inspirational soundtrack. Yeah. I can't. It's harder to release stuff when it's not my music, right? All right. Let's get some stuff done here. All right. So. I would think building up against the wall would just be common sense. Now, I foolishly did not do this on an actual good 90-degree angle. Building it is going to... I'm okay with it being a little crooked. I'm all right with that. Things don't always have to be straight. In fact, sometimes that's where you get your cool little alleyways. You could... I could write an entire adventure based on this alleyway. And that probably sounds stupid or egotistical, but it's not. In my mind. Well, I guess it could be. But it's not intended to be, right? Like, imagine if you could get through here, right? You sneak through this little space and then find out that back in here, there's some freaking slumlord or evil pimp. You know what I mean? That's keeping people in this little section down and you're trying to figure out what's going on and yet everybody knows you don't go down here unless you're looking for... I mean, there's a hundred different ways to take it. Uh, Spotify playlist, maybe? Kind of. I've released the original playlist. That's the same thing. Uh, I need to build off of non-evil pimp. I could see a version where there's not any, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's probably none in our existence, but I could see a situation where maybe they got together and hired someone to play that role to take care of them and oversee security in an area like that. And you think the pimp's the one in charge, and they're really not. It's the girls that pay him. That would be interesting. But no one would respect the girls, so they have to run the business themselves from behind his mask kind of thing. Uh, when you think of music for D&D, you usually think of medieval folk music. No, not at all. Not at all. My music uh, is rock to heavier metal music. That's what inspires me to write Merged Worlds. Uh, most of the songs, most of the Merge World's content has been written based on that kind of a, a music. Breaking Benjamin is a huge one. I, feel like, I realize I'm going to pull these a little bit away from me. Breaking Benjamin uh, was some very early but major influence on Merge World's music. Uh, ten years, Seether. Stone Sour. This is the type of music that I listen to. When it works on OnlyFans, it's possible. Uh, well, in case of some siege, the wall and the buildings will be destroyed. I will build the bathrooms near the walls. So people break the walls, they will walk in poop. <laughs> it's humorous. I like that. <laughs> you shall not be successful with our poop.
and I don't want the wall, I want the roads to be broken and unsmooth. I want them to be things jetting out in some of these areas. Look at this. Obviously, you got to come all the way down for that. Bring that out a ways and make a bigger road. My only concern about writing a story like the one I just accidentally hinted at, which was the whole potential good pimp thing, is I would not want people to think that I'm throwing that type of a job or position as a favorable light. Definitely not my thoughts. I even think pimps are good. No, no, Draven doesn't. <laughs> Draven does not have that idea at all. Just getting myself some more colored buildings to work with. Puzzle these out because, again, need some of these things will be built corners, right? I think that there's going to be buildings pretty straight around here and around the outer wall because you that's a natural thing to build up against, right? Um, I think that the real kicker would be the situation when you have people who I need to live a little space between the walls for guards and such. Um, a lot of the larger skitty, little, 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 cityscapes, everything, the important stuff's built along the roads. Okay, I grabbed that one, grabbed that one, that one, and getting here. Obviously, this is just a hodgepodge to get started. Uh, interesting that a pimp is considered bad, but no, ma madame isn't. Well, um, I would say the reason for that is, is a nine times out of ten, a madam is not forcing someone into that position. Uh, which with pimp, it's it's much more likely that the individuals <laughs> listed as the employees um, are a group of people who do not have any choice in the matter. And as such, I would agree that it's you know, definitely much more negative connotation that way. And with good cause. Glad I'd hear me get a big window. That's buildings in the corner. See, I've also got individual houses. i got little single houses I can put in here still. And that's what I'm going to fill in a lot of these things. I'm going to put like weird just two groups together. Uh, a male madam running a brothel. Mm, I don't know. Never had to deal with that as an example. But again, if you know, and this is me, if we look at history, right? 99% of the time, if it's a guy running it, they're probably doing it by force. Wouldn't say always, there's exceptions to every rule, I'm sure. But I would say that's a, it's a safe bet to assume. Here, this corner. Again, I'm trying to have a mix of the colors here because I don't want the buildings themselves shouldn't be like the color of the area. Small. Alleyways up in there. And we're going to bring it down a smidge. That would work very well. No, I'm not unhappy with that. All right, what do we got here? Long one. There. Do, do. Sorry if this is not the most exciting thing I've ever done. <laughs> Map making is not for everyone. But I think it's important. Again, it's the, the map to your world, much like knowing your pantheon of gods, your clerics, your races, knowing the map that you, you're, the confines in which you're limiting yourself. That's what a lot of this is, right? This is your own personal limitations that you have decided to put your story within. And then you can grow further and further out as your story continues. Uh, there's a horde crashing mix of old and new architecture. That's very true as well. That is correct. I did, I did say that the old and the new is very much mixed together. I think that's a good shout out. Thank you. 
Not a lot there. No, you would go dick me on the other cameras. All right, here we go. Okay. It's kind of like the one that they already built there, but yeah. beggars can't be choosers, I guess. So then this, I think, would look good. This. I could put like a small building or something in there. And let's get some more red in here. Goal right now is just building along the street. And you'll notice they're not all lined perfectly up and down. Some are a little closer to the street than the others. You know, it's not like somebody's standing out there like we have with the sidewalk, right? That's the same thing as that? No, it's different. And what else have I got that could stick in there? <laughs> you. Yep. Um, do you think that people that live further from the main road would be less likely to tolerate people from the other factions? Um, I wouldn't really go that far. I think that a lot of that would come down to more um, what is further from the from the from the from the main street, right? If that's where all the residences are, if there's mostly businesses along the street, residents back here, the people that live here work here. You know, uh, so it's I, I would say that wouldn't be as they're the same folks. It's at night they're here and day they're over here. If one of these sections is a crafting area that deals with people um, and the other area is more of a slummier kind of area run by the street gangs, they are going to be tougher. But the people who are selling stuff want to sell to anybody, regardless of which group you belong to. Kind of like the innkeeper I introduced. He their money's as good as anybody else's. I'm trying to make sure that when it comes to this, it's not a every fa every borough is designed the same, where the rich people are in one section, the poor people are in the other. Sometimes there is no rich people, sometimes there's no poor people. Um, and sometimes there's and there's going to be businesses even up in this area, and that's what some of the single buildings I'm thinking are going to be. So, for example. These are all single houses of different colors that I can use to mix into areas like this. And some of these could be a building, or I mean like a store, right? Let's say if I did this, this, all right? Let's get back into my arrow. Spin this around, right round, baby, right round, like a record baby. Right? Something like that. So that could be a store and a store mixed in with houses. I can then take this little business, it here, next to this little guy. Up a little further, but do it. So it gives me some freedom to do other houses and buildings and such. Um, council members from each area still live in that area or the center area? That's a good question. I haven't put that out into the store yet. And as we are standing here, I honestly cannot currently answer that question. I know the answer, but for story reasons, I can't say yet. Good question. I'm just not able to answer it. So I apologize for that. But you know, there are some things I want to be extra careful on. That could lead to something that could be important later. Who's this? Little guy? I've already got some of them. Put a few more out here. Um, boy, that'll get your brain thinking, though, won't it? Grab this yellow house. Yeah, I could think of... Say that's an awning sticking off the top. Here we've got one of those little courtyard areas between homes that could be something, right? 
Still living there. That could be reason for the richer buildings in each one. Could be. Could be. Right now, as you can see, I'm focusing on this section first, and then I'm going to move on. I'm going to get a couple more of the big ones. Some of those. Hmm. Big angle green. Get you there for a minute so I can grab you. It'll give me some stuff to work with. A lot of this stuff's still getting moved around. He's here. Stay where it is. Like that. Sorry, sometimes I get into it and I stop talking. <laughs> Richer in every section of the city seems a little non-reasonable. Yeah, because you got to assume that those things happen naturally, right? And if you're a city that's building out, it would be my assumption that the new stuff being built is not going to be the wealthiest. I'll give you what, I, what example what I mean by that. Uh, with some exceptions, I think that some people move to the area. Merge Worlds is a great example. Hey, we're wandering and we've decided we want to live here. No houses in the city? Oh, well, we'll build some right outside the wall. Build some outside the wall. Build some outside the wall. So now we need some businesses in there, okay, to, to, add, to take care of us. Oh, people don't want to go all the way in the city. Let's put a couple inns here. Oh, now there's these businesses. We need people to live here. There's more people. There's more people. And that's how a city grows further and further out, right? It's what a suburb really is in our world. It's where... Houses kept building out, and then finally they started to give them gas stations. They get a McDonald's. They get a you know, dollar store. All of a sudden, there's a Walmart there. So it goes from residential to business, residential to business, and there will be nice chunks of wealthy homes. And a lot of times, that's when those homes are built together in one shot. You know what I mean? There'll be a subdivision in today's world would be a good example of that, where someone has gone ahead and gone out of their way to build something schnazzy, I'm using technical terms there, obviously. Uh, specifically, schnazzy to um, be you know, appealing to people. And then around that, like, okay. And a lot of that comes to cities as well, remember. And this is, again, comparing it a lot to our world, but our world is still based off our past world, right? Zoning. This section is commercial. This is where the businesses go. This is manufacturing. This is where you can build your factories. This is residential. You know, a king could do the very same thing. Ah, people are wanting a new stores or a new market. What do we do? Okay, this section over here is away from the roads. We're going to designate this for warehouses. So anybody who wants to buy land or wants to rent or lease land in a city to have warehouses, we're going to put them there. We're going to build the warehouses and rent them out to people who want to use them. More money for the government. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, there's a, we need more housing. People are living on the streets. Okay, let's build a bunch of houses over here. What kind of people are starting to live on this? Is it because we don't have any, we have wealthy people with no place to live? There's an influx of refugees from a war or a merge or whatever the case is. Okay, how much money have these guys got? Not a lot, huh? Okay, let's build some cheap housing. They're they just not dying on the streets. And then maybe one day when they can build their way up and move into the nicer housing. So I would think zoning and that type of thing. I would think that a city planning, uh, uh, whether it be the king or whether it be the Senate in this situation, would kind of sit down and be like, okay, well, what do we need now? You know, every city's going to, we need barracks. Okay. This is becoming a crime filled area. Okay. We need to get a barracks in there. We need a guard presidents presence in that section of the city to cut down on some of the crime. And so, you know, it gets used that way. Thinking of leaving this a little courtyard, I might put something in there. This on the other hand. Like that being a little... Obviously got to come down. Silly for doing what I was doing. Now I'm even sillier for doing that. Um, but yeah, 
designated rich areas. A lot of times that's more when someone buys one of these five houses, tears them down and builds their own little estate. And I would think there'd be some of those in the city. It's where the rich people buy up a low income housing. The people are like, wow, I can move to a middle class now. Hell yeah, I'll sell you my low income. They get permission from the king or the council or the whoever's in charge of that stuff. And they're able to go ahead at that point and be like, sweet deal. Now I'm going to rip down this whole section of little shitty houses we don't like. And we're going to get a big house. The government's going to get paid a chunk of money to do that. The person's going to spend a chunk of money to do that. Right? Who are those right next to each other again? We need something different. What's this? There's a blue one. That's... Let's see. Same one I have over there. Well, that's not going to work. That looks crooked to me, but it's actually the design to be that way. Uncrooked it a little. Okay. I see that some of these have their own built-in alleyways, which I like. I'm trying to make some of the roads a little bit smaller. But I would, you know, when I built the, the things that I'm talking about with you all right now, these are the things I think about when I'm building a map or a city or even from an, a story or adventure point of view. I'm like, okay, why are these things the way they are? Like that. Oh, I didn't see this little guy. All right. Now, where have I got some more little houses? One little house right there. Used that. Let's grab this guy and him right round. I like that. So this is definitely a heavy residential area that we're seeing now with businesses along the outer frame. I think I need to put one more inn over or building to represent an inn. Everything from here over and from here down is where I want it to be. These things, this guy, and the stuff up here is not. At the same time, I need this to kind of go off screen. Again, remember, this isn't the top of the, of the city here. Got these weird ones. That I don't want to just... Throw in here to mess everything up for everybody. It'd be like an old building that's just been there a very long time. It makes everything built around it odd. But at the same time, it, things like this will break it up so I don't have just straight rows of buildings. Around the outer edges, it makes more sense. This, we want a T intersection. Makes more sense to do it. I'm okay with. And then I got this guy. Straight street there. And I'm about out of stuff. To be honest with you. I mean, to, to keep building with. Um, so one other thing I want to talk about today, because it's something that uh, was asked about, is seeding stories. So seeding stories... I'm not, I'm sure not the first person who used that term, is to plant things in a story that are intended to resolve later. Um, seeding plot points is, in my opinion, the hardest part of writing a good story, right? Because you want the person or the people, the person reading your book or the party to remember that moment when it needs to be remembered, but you don't want to make it so obvious that they're like, ooh, we better remember this. You know what I mean? You need it to be memorable, but non-mesmerizing. 
probably a horrible way to say that, but it's the only thing I could think of to describe it. Memorable enough that they'll remember it when you need them to, but not mesmerizing enough that they fixate on it and, by fixating on it, find the pieces that pull that story together. And you're never going to do it perfectly. There's going to be someone who figures out a piece of the story or figures out what's going to happen next just because they're really good at following the clues. And that's excellent Uh, because some people love that. And then some people love the surprise. They don't want that to happen. Uh, Master Gardener, I try. It's important to me to put stuff in there. And sometimes I seed things without knowing exactly how I'm going to use them later. Um, I'll give you an example of that. Um, way back in early Merged World, when the party was out trying to find the stones and do all their business, uh, the group of four and so on, and they had their house back in Paxiwal they could teleport to. And they teleported back into their secret room, into the pitch black darkness that Dandy, with all of her skills, had trapped the entrance out like crazy. They teleported and were standing in the darkness, and before their eyes could adjust to the infravision, they heard someone say, Hello, friend. And that was it. And that was the cliffhanger at the end of that episode. And then, due to some life stuff, we all ended up not playing for a month and a half. Someone got sick, someone's uh, lost a family member, and then someone got pregnant. There was a a whole bunch of stuff going involved with the group of people. And so they had six weeks to dwell on that. And they came up with two theories. One that was way off. One that was pretty close. But the one that was way off was the one they thought the most. Uh, And so I'm like, okay, how can I use this? You know, when... When I didn't re- it wasn't meant to be that big of a plot point because they weren't supposed to have to go six weeks without knowing that, right? It wasn't supposed to be that. So it became a bigger plot point than it was. And it also gave me the ability to use that phrase, hello friends, to mean things down the road. Um, Artemis, uh, it's your choice, Artemis. All, it's, all, it's always been your choice. That is such a, a, a huge burden on Artemis because of how many times that's gone wrong for her. And I've used that against her. <laughs> and I'll be first to admit it. Yep, use it against her. Uh, I would be the first. You know, I'm, I'm building up here right now. So I'm just dropping some more blocks down to, to play with. And let's get some more of these guys. Let's get some more. Uh, what else we got in there? That'd be something else shape-wise. Who is this little guy? Oh, some little nooches. Oh, I love that. Oh, wait, are they identical? Oh, they're not. Oh, sweet. There's some new nooches I've not used. Excellent. I'm totally going to fit some of those in. Oh, and they're crooked as hell. I love it. I love it. Crooked as hell gives me some options. Excellent. Let's figure out what we're going to do with these. Oh, that's perfect. See, things like this in my mind, you're like, oh, that throws the thing off. Does it? Maybe. But maybe in a good way. I'll give you an example. I'm going to come back to what we were talking about a moment ago. Um, in just a moment. Right? So this, not that important looking. But what if something's important right here? Give you an example. Let's just say here's the temple, and there's a little bench here, and some player characters are just hanging out on this bench. And then in this little courtyard where people are dancing because the whole city's celebrating some type of festival, these young PCs are sitting here, and then a young girl comes through here selling flowers. That is exactly the spot where I would have a seraph meet Adina. It's just big enough that you could imagine locals in that area would be dancing. That might be a center place where they would gather uh, for these type of situations. Even though it's just a normal street, it's not on the main street. Um, So when I'm building a map like this, I'm looking for those empty areas so I can put something in there that's important to the story. Maybe this little square here has several vendors in it food vendors, or maybe it's the mini marketplace of this section for whatever reason. I look for those little, that's that little space I leave sometimes. Like, well, that's a big space, big space here. But what's going to be in there when I tell the story? And 
seeding your story works exactly the same way. You're leaving yourself the openings. Statue of Fountain, very good idea. Statue of Fountain is another great thing you could put in there. Uh, you know, things that it's a it's a meeting place. Oh, we were sitting by the fountain when we heard the news of this. Or or go talk to so and so beggar. You can find him in front of the fountain. Perfect example to put an NPC interaction. Um, and well, that one stays where it is. These guys move. Well, some little guys. Um, but yeah, those are those are perfect examples of interactions uh, that can be important later. They walk by the fountain, and later on, they get you got to go by so and so. They live there. They hang out at that fountain. Oh, we know where that fountain is. We were there earlier. Oh, good. Then you'll know where to go. So you know, setting up things like that, Se seeding your story works the exact same way. It's putting something in there that you either know has to be important, or ooh, wasn't meaning to do that. Uh, or it's maybe it's something that you don't know if you can, you have an idea. Throw it in there. If they fixate on it to the point that you think it's going to give it away, you can abandon it. They don't ever have to know it was meant to be important. They don't ever have to know that was meant to be there. You can use it somewhere else, seat it in somewhere. But um, I'm making this little corner a hodgepodge on purpose. Wanting this to be messy here. Okay. Um, but yes, so, I mean, like I said, I'm all about putting in things that could potentially be important later. And I try, I try to do it often. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to say this without any recent spoilers. Ask do not comment directly, just because sometimes people show up for this stream that may not have got to hear the most recent episode of Merged Worlds yet. Uh, but for those of you who have, uh, this next episode is at least 90, if not 100%, going to be telling the story of what happened at the end of last episode. Right? That's, that's its intent. That's what it's for. Uh, we will be stepping away from the kids either for the whole episode or close to the whole episode. Just depends on how long it takes me to tell the stuff I need to tell. Um, but the, we're, you know, for that specifically, those of you who've been following the story, there will be a, what did we say this was going to be green? Somebody said this is green. Ah, we'll call it green. Uh, let's see. Save. I may spell burrow wrong. Don't don't hate me for it. If so, I'll fix it later. Greenboro. Gonna take a minute to save all that. I hadn't saved it all yet, and I probably should in case something happens or I crash it. Um Don't care about the kids right now. Well, that works out well. <laughs> and um, I knew this, this was going to happen during this section of the story, uh, because one thing that I've, I've tried to stress without being too blatant about it is that, um, I, this is the kids section of the world, right? We're talking about the kids story at this point. That doesn't mean that everybody else is just sitting at home, not doing anything. That would be silly, right? These are people who are saving the world every other year at this point. And they've already been through many years of peace, not counting the attack on Serenity. Um, so they've been through a lot of years of peace here. It's only understandable that eventually something's going to happen there too. Their story's not over. Dividing line for the boroughs. Ah, will I show the dividing line? That's the other question. Um, I've been kind of thinking about down on the bottom section here, this is where I'm going to put a bunch of houses together. That kind of, like up here, this is this is all meant to be one borough here. I want the boroughs to be large. This is a, this is a city that's meant to rival Paxawal. Technically, a borough should be bigger than what I have here. But it's assumed that all this stuff up here is borough, and maybe I won't have a map for that because it's just not that important. 
this is the section I need to tell my story in this borough. And if they're traveling from here to another borough, doesn't mean there's not a big section in the middle. It just means there's a big section that they that doesn't matter to the story. So I, I never thought that I would be putting these seven boroughs down and it would film make a full map. That was not my intention here. I've done maps like that. I will do maps like that again. This wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be the heart of the seven boroughs where the main shit hits, where the main stuff's going on. Apologize. And then I'm going to have a map of the middle of the city where the royal family and whatever's going around there is. Because that's going to be, it's not, it's almost like an eighth borough, if you would, but it's, it's the official, we run the city section. Um, not saying that the ambassadors, not ambassadors, senators live there or not, but it's definitely where the municipal buildings would be, right? That's where the, that type of stuff is run. So um, definitely that's meant to, to be along those lines. Here's another spot of a great little courtyard. That's an awesome little space right there. And in my head, I, I picture, you know, a wagon with some watermelons on the back that somebody brought into town or whatever, you know. Designated arrows, areas in the borough where you can go and set up a booth for the day or pay $5 to whoever owns the land and uh, you know, five gold, whatever the case may be. And you have a, a pass for the day. You know, you maybe you buy a pass just to sell in the city. And then you pay for someone's like paying for parking. I'm going to pay to have this spot. And maybe, you know, you've worked it out. Maybe you know that person. You've come into that spot in the month of June every year for the first two weeks of June. You show up with your watermelons and that guy is like, hey, this space is reserved for so-and-so because every year he pays me and doesn't cause trouble. So he's booked for that two weeks, you know. That in itself could cause problems. Maybe there's some larger groups of people who uh, want to use that as well. And now there's some conflict between this person coming in from out of town. Drama. Part of lettuce for the gnome to fall into. Yeah! His was a barrel of lettuce, but the barrel of lettuce had to get there. Jim's character uh, f fell off a wall and into a barrel of lettuce. Uh, and he woke up covered in green. And, and it, for like the next, every so often when he got into a fight, he's a gnome monk. Every so often he'd get into a fight, like a little piece of lettuce would fall out of his clothes. And he's like, I don't know where it keeps coming from. I've washed this. A little piece keeps coming out. So is there a court in each borough or is it all lawful interaction to get taken care of in the center? So anything legal is handled by the city. The boroughs themselves do not have any actual official political control. Right? There's no real leadership. Um, other than they have their own, their, their, their own uh, again, we call senator, which is over a section of the city. Why does the senator represent that certain group of people? That's something we're going to talk about in the story, and I can't say right now. But there's a reason why a certain area, or that area became its own faction. And I can say that a lot of the reason that that faction exists is because of that senator. Now, not that senator specifically, because the city's hundreds of years old at this point, but the person who holds that rank had followers around them, right? And this isn't the, this isn't why, but I could give you an example of a storyline that would work there. What if there was a king, right? Back in the day, in the early city, and he had seven children. And they all were fighting to see who got control when he died. So instead, he broke the city up into seven sections and said, you rule this section. You're, you're the, the lord or the baron of this section. And you're the baron of this one, baroness, baron, baroness, baron, baron. And that people around there, you got people like the person, they treat them well, they be, it's loyal. Yeah, the green baron, that's who I live under. And he treats us real well and he doesn't tax us into the dirt. Hell yeah, you know. That we're going to represent him. You said something bad about the Green Baron. Well, now you and I have to have problems. Because you, you were saying the Blue Baron's better. You know? And then over time, instead of being a Baron type thing, they realized the, the position down there. was like, oh, instead of, you know, four generations, instead of us always conniving against each other, let's make a Senate where all of our votes count. Allies and enemies and treaties and all that stuff could go in interaction that way. But the people don't care about that high-rounded stuff. They're still loyal to their section, to their senator, to their to their baron in that situation. That's not what I'm going to be doing, but that's an example of something I considered uh, that I'm not using. 
Uh, or each of Mercy's Knights has a section. Each of Nurse, uh, Mercy's Knights does have a section of Serenity that they are responsible for. That is correct. Uh, for, for the gathering of taxes, uh, overseeing of protection, and there are... For some of them, it's not a large area. Um, Quan had a large area, but he has stepped back in uh, recent years. Oops. Because he and... Originally, he and Seamus oversaw what was Serenity. But as Serenity grew, Quan had to... It's the opposite. I said it the wrong way. Quan started taking more area outside of the city proper when Flynn stepped up. And Flynn took on a major role of Serenity itself. Because he was a squire of Mercy's for a long time, right? By the time he stepped up to be a knight, the other knights already had eight jobs and areas and were expanding. And, and different people have different things, right? Of course, we lost one of the, the knights in the battle against the Emperor 20, 18 years ago at this point. Um, so someone had to step in to fill that void. Quan's also got Shadow Company that he has to deal with. So, And that's a Shadow Company thing that no one actually knows about, but everybody knows about, but nobody knows anything about. One of those things. Governmental stuff. I need a bigger one. No, that one's not that color. I need a big green one. Big green one. Where's the big? Big blue one. No, big blue one. I want that one. No, that's the little one. Oh, here we go. Um, what's the big one look like? It's got the little curved niche in the corner. That's niche in the corner. Okay, maybe I'm not looking at the right one. Okay, I'll make this work. So yeah, yeah, Serenity has a lot of things along those lines, uh, and I would assume that other kingdoms would as well. Somewhat, anyway. That's kind of how I'm imagining this would work. That comes back to kind of what we were talking about before for, again, seeding stories. Knowing what you want to do, very different from knowing how to do it. Um, and nothing wrong with that. There will be successes and there will be failures. There will be things that you really want to happen and they just don't land. It still happens for me. It still happens to me even when I'm telling the story. There are some things that I think are going to be a big epic moment. Nothing really happened. Nobody really thought it was that cool or that big of an idea, which is fine. And then there's some things I write that are just filler for me that all of a sudden become people fixate on that. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with using that to your advantage. As a DM, it is totally fine to take something that wasn't an important and make it important and pretend it was meant to be important the whole time. <laughs> there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yes, you can lie to your players. Or in my case, I guess, storytellers. Or uh, not storytellers. Um, listeners. I guess. Nothing wrong with that. Goal is to make sure that people are enjoying what you're giving them. We're not looking for truth in every situation. That stuff doesn't matter. As long as everything you're doing is good for the story. That should be your priority. And at the same time, if your players are afraid anytime you say, I did it because it was good to the story, you did good. Pickled fish, pickled fish. That's a running gag that won't die. Not that I want it to. It just, it doesn't. You know what I mean? And, and that's okay with me. It's just a silly thing that happened one day that wasn't meant to be important and turned it out being that way. Turned it out. Well, that was bad grammar from hell. Turned out. What's this? I need some more shapes that I do. Oh, good. Here's some. Oh, damn it. I keep finding cool shapes after I don't, after I've not used them. Little nuggets here. Oh, look at that. Perfect little nugget. Uh, 
That's excellent. Excellent. So, what do you guys think? To me, this is what a city, a medieval city would look like. Because you don't have planners out there zoning quite as effectively as we were talking about. Um, it'd be built up over years, right? And then over time, something may be broken down and new things built up. Some of the buildings are right next to each other. Now, down here is where I have to mess with things. And here's where I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about doing, like I said, a wall of buildings. Probably should move these over to the road. Next time in the future, I make a bunch of little houses, I should put them in the road. Or either I don't have to move them five times. That'd be a smart thing. For future reference, if building a map, put your little houses in the road so you don't have to move them all a hundred times. That's right. This is educational for all of us. Wow. Um, so... Uh, so yes, I write a story and I seed things. And when I can get something in where players are like, huh, that's cool, huh, that's funny, and that's all I get out of it, and I know it's going to be important later, one of the greatest feelings. One of the greatest feelings. And there are probably six to eight of those that in this next episode I'm going to be calling back to. Remember when this happened? Remember when so-and-so said this? Remember the time this happened? This is what the so-and-so was doing. I'm trying not to give away spoilers about the newest episode. But uh, it's going to be a lot like that. It's going to be a lot like that. Still need to build along the road. That's important. Let's get that. I got so many of this one. I don't know how I ended up with so many of this one. Just turned around and I had a thousand of those. I think that would fit in. Most delicious. Most delicious. Um, let's see. I'm gonna try something. Duplicate! Ha ha! Yes! That makes life so much easier now that I found the duplicate button. I'm looking for that. <laughs> you I wanted this big one and I can't get it from anywhere. Duplicate! Ha 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 ha! Yes! Spin it though, so it doesn't look like all the other ones. Excellent, Stimpy. Okay. Here. And this one, maybe. Here. So I think across here, especially, is where a burrow should really, should really break. Buildings have been built almost like a wall. This is too close to the entrance for too much infighting to be tolerated, if that makes sense. This is one of the main entrances to the city. Obviously, there's not houses all over the street, but you know what I mean. The people who moved in, or, you know, the this city guard are not going to let borough fighting happen right here. And here's far enough. You're far enough from the entrance of the city that your horseplay could be tolerated. So when we uh, told the story this last week and Seraph and Deacon and them had to go talk to the head person of Green, this would have been the perfect spot for that. They went through the knife store into an area you couldn't get to to go into a house that no longer had access. This little purple thing no longer has access to get in or out of this community. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Do, 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 do. Uh, level one player. This is a question from Michael. Or statement. Uh, level one players make something minor so much worse than it was meant to be, but then they disappointed when they nothing close. Oh yeah, I understand. In fact, I'll give you an example. I think I've told this before, but I'll say it again because I'm nothing if not a broken record. Um, but the uh, I was playing with a different group at one point, and. They, they had they had gone through an area where there was a trap, and they rogue rolled level one characters. This is not this is on merge worlds, but not the characters you know, any of you know. Um, but for those of you who are listening, who know Mister Stats, he was the rogue. Uh, <laughs> But gentleman was playing the rogue, 
and he was doing a good job, but he rolled to see if there were traps, right? Your job. I don't know if there's traps. And uh, he rolled poorly. So, and he did it perfectly. Now, I'll tell you what I mean. Some people forget that they are not their player or their character. And what they know doesn't necessarily mean the character knows it. You, as a person, might know that if you kill a troll, it's just going to regenerate if you don't burn it or hit it with acid. Does your character know that? How does your character know that? Justify it to me. I'd be able to do so. Oh, sweet deal. That's awesome. If you can't, mm, no, you don't know that. You know? So, and sometimes I will do a random roll on my side and say, hey, by the way, your character knows this. Why? You do. Maybe you heard it in a bar one time. Maybe your father told him a time that the village was attacked by uh, trolls and the king sent men down and burned them because they, they said you have to do that to get rid of them forever. You know, it could be, there could be a memory. You happen to know this. I do that a lot when I play with characters to roll whether or not they have random knowledge. That's meant to be a little building in the middle of a... Of a... I'm okay with that corner as well. So, anyways, story of the rogue. He uh, rolled for traps, and he did not get it. Right? Hey, ain't you one? How goes it? He did not succeed. Now, how a player tells that to the rest of the party, especially a first-level character, is a good idea of whether or not they're going to play a good rogue. Give you an example. You are a level one rogue and you roll and you do not find traps. What do you tell the party? Hey guys, I didn't find any traps. So we better be careful in here because I failed. Better be extra careful. Or you can be like, hey guys, good news. No traps in here. That's a good role player. He didn't find any traps. He doesn't know he failed. You think you did it correctly. Great news! There are no traps in this room. Ta-ta! I've searched it. Oh, good. Then let's walk across. Trap gets sprung. That's a good player right there. It's a good role player when someone can separate themselves, their knowledge, from what the character's knowledge is. The character only knows that he did not succeed in finding a trap. The player, who knows that they failed the roll, so there might be a trap. See the difference there? Stories can work the same way. When you're seeding a story, you've got to be careful with your player's knowledge. Right? This is me tying it back into my theme for the day. You have to be careful in remembering what your player's knowledge is, because you're writing a story, and you're planning a big surprise that there's no way the characters could ever figure this out because they have no idea what so-and-so and what means. But the players do. So it's, it's, it can be dangerous to forget that there are people behind the characters because if you're writing it off camera, you know, you're thinking it yourself, you're writing it, getting ready for the next week's D&D &D session or however you and your friends play. Um, and then you find, I don't like, And you find out that all of a sudden, you know, oh, they already knew that. They already figured that out. I find that hits a lot of people when they borrow storyline. I want you to tell you there's nothing wrong with that. If you are writing a D&D &D adventure for you and your friends, and you want to use... And uh, something you saw in an episode, old black and white episode of Twilight Zone while visiting your grandpa. Do that. Write a story based on that. That's fine. 
There's nothing wrong with that. Any DM who tells you he's never borrowed from anything is a liar. Of course we borrow from things. Want me to give you the best example of mine? Hey, Tyler. I'll give you the best example of me using something else that wasn't mine. I may have touched on it a little bit, but I've never like actually given the official reason why. But I will now. Some people have asked about it unknowingly. But... The characters in Merge World spent an awful long time finding those artifact weapons, right? There was those artifact weapons that were everything in the early years. That was what everything was based on, right? All those stupid artifacts that kept causing problems for everybody. All powerful artifacts. But for some people who noticed... When I was telling the story, I never really told anybody what they do. Hinted at a couple. Casually. The stones are different, but the actual artifacts themselves that they had to gather. And that's because when I was playing it... Oops. When I was playing that adventure years earlier, um, I was using artifacts that I took from a book series. So when I originally started Merge Worlds and part of that, the weapons were based on 12 swords from a book series. It wasn't until years later when I got with the new group that I changed them from being 12 swords to being 12 artifacts. Each one being a different type of weapon. And then I included a group of rings and stuff. I changed that lore a lot, which was easy to do because the only thing they knew about the fire year aura is, or era is what I told them. But then when I got to telling the story here, I realized I didn't want to tell any of those weapons stories or any of those matter because even a lot of those were based on other things. And it was around that time period that I started shutting myself off, and, and I'm not recommended doing this, from reading other sci-fi or fantasy sci-fi or D&D themed stuff. I started getting away from it because I was worried that I was going to use someone else's stuff without realizing it. And that scared me. Um, because, I mean, I think you all agree, right now, my story is out here. I'm, I'm selling it as my own, right? Merge Worlds is my thing. And so I never wanted people to look at that and say, hey... He stole Lord of the Rings section or something like that. Now, you're never going to be perfect, of course. Right? I mean, there's always going to be great minds think alike kind of situations. And so when that happens, you know, you just got to roll with it. But using other people's stuff also makes it much easier for the, uh, your players to figure out stuff. Because maybe they've seen that movie. How big is that? I'm sure I could use like a watch, but I could use something. Um, fortifications, what's that look like? Oh, that's a little gray building. Oh, we'll see some little gray buildings in here. That's not bad. Still need a couple big ones, though. Uh, let's grab this big green guy here. So, the yeah, the Merged Worlds story, when we got to it and I was telling with you guys, I really breezed over what those all-powerful artifacts everybody was fighting over did. You know, um, that is a barracks, a guard building right there. If I've ever seen, it. oh, I should on a million things. Um, read that series of book Twelve Swords. Do you remember the author? Oh yeah, still own them. I reread them all the time. The Book of Swords by Fred Saberhagen. Amazing books. The first books were the Book of Swords. There were three of them. And then there was uh, eight books that were the Books of Lost Swords. Twelve swords created by the gods. The gods made a mistake because they accidentally created swords that could kill them. The whole world goes to hell trying to get control of these swords. And every one of them and what they did. 
And I loved them. That's what inspired that storyline. Great book series. I was in summer school. Don't ask questions. I was in summer school. And I didn't know anybody there. So I just go hang out in the library on my lunch break. And they had all of them there. And over the month and a half I was in summer school, I read the all three of the Book of Swords and all eight of the Book of Lost Swords. I still have them all. Red Saberhagen. Great writer. Highly recommend him. The Book of Swords, Book of Lock Swords, great books to read. I will read. Let's see. Let's grab that. Um, yeah, 12 swords. A lot of good times with those swords. But then when I got to... I'll give you some more examples of things I used. When I got to the sword, or to the, the era that was big and all of those guys, the first section of that, um, there were rings involved. And at the time, I was a big Final Fantasy player. I loved Final Fantasy. So the rings were Fyraga, Blizzaga, Thundar. It was all based on the elements... Final Fantasy it was a ring that did element-based stuff. But I pulled all of that out. The only ring you actually heard anything about was the ring that Moog wore, which made him immune to all the other rings. Which that was its only power. He had one ring that made him immune to every other artifact, save one. That was the one sword I kept, regular longsword, that if it was used to take a life basically broke the artifacts. It, it basically killed the artifacts for a period of time. It was, pro it was a prophecy thing. You guys know I love prophecy. Uh, I love prophecy all the time. So I, I, I've always used prophecy in there. And just as a little tease, because I'm a turd, why is there so much prophecy in Merge World? One day we're going to find out. It's not what you think. But yeah, anyways... Got to go lie awake in bed thinking about that cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be calling this at end of the stream here in just a couple minutes as well. Uh, we're right at about 10 o'clock, and I usually run these about two hours. I'll, I can finish up this last little bit later. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed chatting about story and chat, chatting about D&D. If you had a good time, please click the like button. It helps out the channel more than I can ever begin to say. Um, we'd love to have you hang out with us more. So if you're new and you're listening for the first time or watching this later, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell notifications. Um, we do Dungeon Dragons content every Thursday night. Uh, every other week, it's this, which is Behind the Dice. And then the other weeks, it's Merge Worlds, the Dungeon Dragons story I've been referencing all night. And next time, we're going to talk more about seeding and growing your story. Uh, I was kind of just starting on the very, very basic of it. Um, the very basic idea of, of getting that started. Uh, not to be afraid of it, but some specifics on um, good things to add to the story, like giving you specific ideas of here's a thing you can use that will really work out later. We're going to talk about that next time. This was this was always going to probably be a uh, a two parter, if you will, for different stuff. That was like a little heart hanging right out of it. There, I need more big stuff down here. I'm going to redo this corner a bit, I think, because I still I forgot I want to do that breaking it off thing, buildings built together thing. So we'll look at that a little bit later. Uh, not today, not on a DD and d thing. So few of us on these streams and a lot of people have to jet right now. It's one reason I stop early. But thank you all for coming. I love every damn one of you. And I appreciate you coming by and letting me chat with you about D&D &D stuff. Uh, please join our Discord channel. Links to that are down the bottom of uh, the description area of this video. Uh, or you can go to my website, onlydraven.com. Links to our Discords there. Come on, talking about D&D &D stuff. I'm going to make an actual Dungeons & Dragons thread. Right now there's a Merge Worlds thread. I think I'm just going to reword it Dungeons & Dragons thread. Uh, and I'm also going to be retooling the Discord just a little bit. Um, I'm going to be redoing some of the categories. Some categories don't really get used anymore, and some I think are getting used a lot that we have well uh, divvied up. So uh, pay attention. Keep an eye uh, on the Discord. Over the next few days, I'm going to be doing a bit of an overhaul on it. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. But I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful evening. Have a great rest of the week. I'll be back here Sunday night and Monday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, for uh, Minecraft, which we do every week. Um, and I don't stream at all tomorrow, but Saturday night or Saturday night at 9.30 p.m., I'll be over on Twitch streaming Minecraft, a special Minecraft playthrough with Colonel Gaming. So you folks, thank you for coming. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. Have a great weekend. Fun.
safe. Okay? See you all later.